everybody, this is Paige from Mosaic Moments. By request, I am showing a tutorial on how to create this beautiful chevron design with my photographs. So to create this shape, you will need the Jumbo Corner Tiles die. And as you can see, this die creates four triangles and they fit together perfectly. And you can use these dies to fill in a two by two square shape on the grid paper. And you can get this die on snappandcrop.com. So now that you have been introduced to the die, let's get started with the tutorial. So first I am going to use the corner tile die to cut my pattern paper. And what I recommend is using a pattern paper that is not too busy and one where it can easily get mixed up. This one is just a floral paper that's kind of an off white color and I felt it was not only perfect for my theme, but it wasn't too loud or too busy. So, because really I want my photos to shine. And I think if the pattern paper is busy, your photos will just compete with it. So that's what I recommend. And as you can see, it's really easy to put these dies in through the machine and it makes four triangles all together. And it pops out really easily. So this is a great easy die to use. So to create the chevron pattern, you will want to cut with this die three times to create your pattern paper or cardstock pieces, whichever you're using. So right now I'm using the corner tile die as a reference. So I look at the two center triangles and they kind of make a diagonal shape, which you need to create the chevron right so I look at those and so I have an idea of where to place my outer pieces so just now I glued the back of this triangle with repositional glue which I highly recommend using the repositional glue because you never know if you want to change around certain pieces so that triangle that I just touched now I did not glue it down because as you can see it would be really hard to tell the placement because I can't line it up on the grid paper. So I'm going to wait until after I cut my photos to glue that piece down. And this is definitely one of the cases where I'm so glad I have the grid paper because I can line these up so easily. All right, again, I'm using my die because I want to... Sometimes it's kind of hard to... Ha get a visual in your mind of where the pieces should go so it's nice to have that die and basically each row you just flip it over one way and the other so I have it there and I'm gonna I'm checking to see where to place the next one and again I'm not gluing down this triangle because it's hard to see the grid and now since I made the first half of the chevron it's easy for me now to know where to place the rest of them. So yeah, this part's pretty easy and you can see the chevron shape really well there. So now I'm going to start cutting my photos with the corner tile die. But before I do that, I did switch out one of my plastic plates for a crease pad. And the crease pad is handy because a lot of you have complained that you get an embossed edge around your photograph, but with the crease pad, the edges of your photos are smooth. So a lot of people have really liked the crease pad for this reason. And I'm using the Sizzix Big Kick die machine, by the way. All right, so basically when I cut it through, I just want to keep these two center triangle pieces, which as you can see, kind of make that diagonal shape. So that will fit into the center of my chevron design. And with my second photograph, I'm and I'm doing this every time, I'm basically, you want to pay attention to where those two center triangles are on your photograph that make the diagonal shape. So that's where your crop's going to be. So look into those two center ones and that's basically the cuts you're going to take. So I did that now and as you can see, the nice thing about the corner tile die is because it has that those two triangles are next to each other. You don't have to figure out 
where to get that diagonal cut, basically. So <laughs> it's nice that with the one, you have to just put it through the machine one time and that cut's figured out for you. For this direction, the other direction, you do have to take some extra steps, but it's not too hard. And I'll show that once I get these ones done. So I rolled it through the machine and the photos are easy to pop out. And I have my two diagonal pieces. So now they're ready to go on the grid paper. So this is basically the easiest part of making the chevron shape. You just need to glue the back of each piece and line it up along the triangles you already glued down. Although this piece, I, as you noticed, I took away the paper piece because this photograph lines up on the grid paper or the grid lines easier. So that way I can just place the paper piece underneath it. I'm doing the same thing. Pretty much with all three of these, I'm going to do, be doing the same thing. So this on this left side, you just line the photograph underneath the paper. And then on the right side, you line up the photograph on the grid lines. And then finally, you can glue on that paper piece. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to put together in the end, right? <laughs> so this... This uh, diagonal part of the chevron is pretty easy. It's pretty easy to cut it and then gluing it down. It goes by really quick, especially with those grid lines in place. All right, now I'm going to cut my last two photographs in the other direction. So I flip the die over on the back so the blade part is pointed up. Because I want to see where I want to crop this photo in the other diagonal direction. Now here's the problem, you can't cut in this direction. So I need to pay attention to how the triangles are going to lay. So that's why I'm, all right, I'm trying to decide on <laughs> which way to cut it. If you need to flip it back and forth a couple of times to remember, see, <laughs> I kind of forgot. I'm like, okay, so I want to make sure this triangle is on that side and that the triangle is pointed towards the top right of the photograph for this first cut, okay? So placed it on there and I recommend using washi tape for sure. Even if you have the magnetic plate, which I do, I still recommend using washi tape. So I just realized I taped it on there in a way where I cannot fit the photograph and the die at the same time. You'll see I'm kind of struggling there. So I'm just grabbing a pair of scissors. Just when you trim it down, make sure you don't cut off the part you will also need for your second cut. All right, so I finally can roll it through the machine. Just take your time with this. All right, so it's rolled through. And so I have my first triangle. So that one's cut. All right, now I need to get the second piece. So what I'm going to do is put my die on and look at the bottom triangle. And, and I'm like, okay, I know which way to... I need to make sure my triangle is pointed towards the bottom left of the photograph, which I'm doing now. And I want to... Just, again, take your time here. I'm doing my best to make sure that the edge of the triangle on the left is lined up right next to the previous triangle I just cut. And again, you will, will, you will want to use washi tape to make sure this die does not slide around when you put it through the machine. So, yes, this direction is a little tricky. So, again, take your time. Make sure, you know, check it twice basically before rolling it through so you don't have to reprint your photo again. And there you go. There's two pieces and if they're not 100% perfect, it's okay with the Mosaic Moments system. It can be off slightly and no one will ever see it. At least that's what I think. <laughs> I sped up the video a little bit. I just wanted to let you see how I do this again. The corner tile die is flipped over on the back and then you wanna pay attention to where the two center, like I'm doing here, the two center triangles align. So on the first cut, 
So when you're cutting the triangle on the left side, you want to make sure the triangle and the die is facing towards the top right. And then you roll it through the machine and make sure you use washi tape. And you'll have your first triangle. And <laughs> you can get rid of any excess pieces you have. And then again, I'm going to cut on the other side by making sure my triangle is facing towards the bottom left. And I want to make sure that triangle is lined up right next to the previous one as much as possible. Then I can roll it through the machine and this part's done and I have two pieces that'll fit that di diagonal space in my chevron. Pretty much I'm going to do the same steps as I did earlier so I can fit this photograph piece right next to my paper piece and I'm doing going to do the same thing again. Um, I did notice, see I took off that paper piece because I noticed it was off by a little bit so I decided to line up the photograph first and then put the paper back on. So not a big deal. That's why repositional glue is great because Sometimes, I know for me anyway, I need to adjust things. So again, I'm just taking my paper piece off, gluing the photo all along the grid line, and then this one on top, and I'm finished. Now that my page is complete, I am really happy with the result. It is th to me, this is Mosaic Moments magic. It's magical how this page came together with the corner tile die. So usually with the corner tile dies, I use pattern paper to decorate my page, but this is a really neat technique if you have photographs like I did here. These, uh, I took these photos on a winter day and I think if I just had a page of rectangles and squares, it would kind of be a little boring. I mean, all I really have is trees and snow in my photos so the chevron adds interest to my photographs and I think this page is just beautiful. So if you enjoyed this tutorial definitely give this video a like and you can also subscribe to our channel to be updated on upcoming tutorials. So I hope you enjoy doing this technique at home which I hope you do it and I'll see you next time.